the Las Vegas Raiders made a small change with Tyreek Wilson in their recent game against the Kansas City Chiefs, and it helped him play much better. Could Tyree Wilson be the game changer the Raiders defense has been searching for? Last week, against the Kansas City Chiefs, Wilson was out there causing chaos, notching his first sack of the season and showing us why he was worth the pick. Welcome back, Raiders Nation. Let's talk about Wilson's breakout game, head coach Antonio Pierce's comments on play calling, and what this means for the future. If you love keeping up with the Raiders and want to see more deep dives like this, make sure to hit that subscribe button. Let's get started. To be honest, Raiders fans were not thrilled when the Raiders drafted him, especially with top prospects like Jalen Carter and Darnell Washington still on the board. Wilson was seen as more of a project player, someone who would take time to develop. But here we are in his second season, and we're starting to see some real flashes of his potential. Wilson notched his first sack of the season against the Chiefs, and this wasn't just a lucky or high effort sack. This was a solid winning play. He took on Kansas City's left tackle, Wanya Morris, held his ground, and pushed through to get to the quarterback. It was arguably one of his best pass rushing plays so far. One of the biggest changes was his new position. For the first time, he spent most of the game lined up as a defensive tackle with about 70% of his snaps in that role. He mainly played in the three technique position, which is common for defensive tackles, though he also took some snaps in the four and five technique. But overall, he spent most of his time inside, making an impact right where it counts. Tyree Wilson played a similar role to dominant defensive tackles like Leonard Williams and Quinnen Williams, lining up in the three technique, four technique, or even five technique positions. At 6'6 and 285 pounds, Wilson's size seems perfect for this role, and it could very well be his best fit. The Raiders might seriously consider keeping him there full-time moving forward. With Kelevon Chasson stepping up and showing some real talent, it's possible Wilson could shift permanently to an inside role rather than filling in for Malcolm Kuntz, who's been out with injury. This move could strengthen the Raiders' defensive line overall. Wilson's versatility lets him switch between inside and outside positions, and lately, we're seeing some impressive flashes. For instance, he went head-to-head -head with two of the best guards in the league, Trey Smith and Joe Thune. Wilson had some powerful reps against these guys, particularly against Trey Smith. There were moments when Wilson pushed Smith back and reset the line of scrimmage, especially on those outside zones run plays. At one moment, Wilson drove his blocker backward, forcing the running back to cut inside instead of getting to the edge. Now, he didn't make the tackle himself, but any coach will tell you that's exactly the type of play that makes a big difference. When it comes to defending zone runs, setting the line of scrimmage is crucial, especially on outside zone plays, where the offense usually finds less resistance. By resetting the line, Wilson disrupted the entire play, stopping the runner from hitting the open field. Tyree Wilson made an impact by penetrating gaps and forcing the running back to cut back inside, which is right where most of the defense is waiting. This is key because if you've got strong pursuit on zone runs, you're set up to stop the play. Wilson did this several times against the Chiefs, controlling his matchup with Trey Smith and pushing him back. Even in pass protection, Smith had trouble holding his ground against Wilson, who showed real power by pushing him back on multiple snaps. It wasn't just Smith either. Joe Thune struggled to contain Wilson as well. Wilson's 6'6 frame and 285 pound build seem to be coming together nicely. When he lines up against smaller linemen, typically around 6'2 or 6'3, his reach and strength create a real mismatch. This is something the Raiders could definitely use to their advantage depending on the matchup. Even Kansas City's left tackle, Wanya Morris, who's about six as four, had a tough time containing Wilson. On several snaps, Wilson got close to the quarterback, sometimes even getting his hands on him. While Wilson isn't a finished product just yet, his potential is clear. As head coach Antonio Pierce mentioned in a recent press conference, the key for Wilson is to keep getting reps. With more snaps, his game will only keep improving. Wilson's already taken over 200 snaps this season, and it's evident he's getting better with each game. Remember, he missed the first two weeks of the season, so seeing this kind of progress, especially against tough competition, is exciting. The more he plays, the more we see him grow into the role. By lining up Wilson on the inside, he can use his longer wingspan to gain leverage and outmatch smaller linemen. This approach lets him keep developing his versatility, playing both inside and outside as needed. 
The improvement we're seeing from Wilson over the past few games gives me hope that by year three, he'll come back even stronger and contribute as a major force opposite Max Crosby. Coach Antonio Pierce's recent comments about play calling, particularly in relation to Luke Getze, are insane. Pierce pointed out something that many Raiders fans have been feeling, that the play calling is holding this team back. The struggles aren't rooted in player performance, the offensive line, or even the quarterback position. The real issue lies in the play calling. Both Aiden O'Connell and Jimmy Garoppolo have struggled, but the root of the Raiders' offensive woes can be traced back to weak play calling. Pierce acknowledged that improvements are necessary and highlighted missed opportunities, penalties, and missed assignments. Although he's committed to keeping Getze as the play caller for now, it raises the question, could the Bengals game be Getze's last chance to turn things around? Honestly, firing Getze isn't the only option. The Raiders could simply reassign play calling duties without making drastic moves. The issue isn't solely about Getze, it's also about the logic behind his choices. Calling three consecutive zone runs on the goal line and failing to score reflects poor judgment. If Getze continues to make questionable calls, it might be time to consider giving play calling duties to Scott Turner, the team's pass game coordinator. Turner has experience and has shown success in the past. If Getze falters against the Bengals, the bye week could serve as an ideal opportunity to make the switch. Even a slight improvement from Turner could help the Raiders secure a few more wins. Sure, that might lower their draft pick, but this season isn't just about positioning for the draft. It's also about evaluating Antonio Pierce as head coach. If the offense can perform better with solid support, it could clarify Pierce's future with the team. In last week's game, we saw a couple of false starts from P. Johnson, but they didn't derail the drive, allowing us to reach the four-yard line. The real issue was failing to capitalize on these opportunities, as the Raiders couldn't score from the four- and three-yard lines. It's clear that identifying and addressing these red zone struggles is crucial moving forward. Speaking of the offensive line, there's some news regarding Andre James, the Raiders' longtime center. He was absent from practice due to injury, which might turn out to be a silver lining. Jackson Paris Johnson stepped in at center and showcased impressive skills. In last week's game, he looked like a top five center. Despite taking zero center snaps during OTAs and training camp, Johnson handled play calls and slide calls with accuracy. With 14 flawless snaps, aside from a couple of spikes, his performance against the Bengals' strong defensive line will be crucial to monitor. If Johnson continues to shine, the Raiders may have a rising star on their hands. Keeping him at center, even when James returns, could be beneficial in the long term. A lineup featuring Johnson, Dylan Parham, and Jordan Meredith could create the best interior line we've seen this season, especially with DJ Glaze and Colton Miller securing the tackle spots. Meredith's football IQ stands out, and paired with Johnson, they show solid communication and defensive line reads, providing stability for the offense. If Parham, who practiced this week, returns to his spot at right guard, it could complete a powerful front line. The Raiders need to determine if Johnson has the potential to fill the center role permanently, or if they'll need to target guards in the upcoming draft. The last thing the Raiders want is to gamble on Johnson at guard, only to later realize they need him at center, leaving a gap where a draft pick could have filled the role. The next few weeks are pivotal for evaluating Johnson's fit and setting the stage for next year. The Raiders have a unique opportunity to develop a physically dominant offensive line, similar to what the Steelers are building. Pittsburgh has invested in massive physical players like Darnell Washington and Isaac Sumalo. These investments are creating an intimidating, bulldozing line that exhausts defenses. For the Raiders, they really need to draft the right players and start building toward a stronger team. There are some good pieces already, but it's crucial to see what they've got this season. I hope they keep Jackson Paris Johnson in for at least two to three games to see what he can do over some full matches. Let me know what you think. And if you enjoyed this video, consider subscribing. I'll see you next time with another video.